Hello, hello. Welcome, friends. This is Chris, and evil is the destruction of freedom, just like it was last week and the week before. Thanks for joining me today. Today's show is live. I'm here in the studio, so I'll try to do my best to keep up with um, the chat. But whoever's here, thanks for joining us. I really always am happy to see um, the wonderful people that show up to check out the End Evil podcast. You know, we're all about trying to make a better world for ourselves, for our future, for our grandchildren, for all of humanity. That's going to require more attention to detail in terms of how we treat every moment and what decisions we make. And the and that basically all comes down to our understanding of what's right and what's wrong. So um, I got something new I just wanted to share with you guys real quick. I, I'll show you a little... Uh, I, you, I just had it displayed on the screen, um, my little QR code there, because um, I've. if you go to chrisjansen.com, um, you can sign up to do consultation with me. What I've started doing is I've had several people I've been meeting with for a long time, and um, I really find that when someone is able to speak clearly about the problems they're facing or the obstacles they're facing or a plan, something they're really excited about, if I can just listen to them, give them some time and some space, all of a sudden they gain this clarity. And, um, you know, I'm always one who has a little piece of advice or an idea if someone so chooses. But the most valuable thing of all is just having someone who will listen to you from your heart. So for the first few people that um, sign up for consultation with me, I'll give you the first meeting for free. And then after that, um, it'll be a paid session. So I look forward to seeing some of you um, in consultation in the future, if you so choose. Otherwise, um, please share this show with others. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't. That helps the show a lot. Make a comment and, um, and make a donate. You can make a donation as well from the endevil.life website. Um, there's a donate tab and you can find um, my links on there as well. So yeah, that's the introduction. With no more ado, I'm happy to share with you, friends. Um, hey, what's up, Rick? Thanks for coming. My wonderful friends are here, Derek Bartolicelli and Leslie Powers. Hello, hello. Sweetheart, thanks for joining us, guys. Glad to be here. Yeah, bonjour, bonjour. How's it going? Crip Rick was cracking and then one great work warriors. Yeah, hello, everybody. Yes, and we also want to remind people to check out the one that's showing up backwards. I guess your mirror's not, your uh, video's not mirrored, but um, yeah. How do you do that? Fine. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so glad you guys could join me. I was looking at your um, YouTube page, and I was looking back, and it looks like it's been almost exactly a year. And it's been more. A little more than a year since you guys started doing um, the Dissolving the Divide podcast and show. And I'm just so proud of what you guys have accomplished in such a short time. All the wonderful people you've um, interviewed. And um, I wanted to just spend this hour kind of learning about how the experience has been for you guys and what we could share with the, our audience from what's been learned from the Dissolving the Divide and what's it all about. So let's start kind of from the beginning. Derek, I, as I recall, it was your idea, right? You want to tell me how this idea blossomed and bloomed and became the wonderful thing it is? Sure, but I would like to have allow ladies first if Leslie, you know. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, okay, so it's funny. I think that our minds were working in similar paths around noticing like, you know, or being maybe perturbed by all of the divisions in the world and um, the po polarizations. And so I had been thinking about doing um, maybe a presentation for funnel or something on, uh, on dialectics and, you know, kind of like overcoming polarization and so forth, but I hadn't really gotten very far on it. And then um, Derek happened to be in California it was like November, like uh, two Novembers ago. And uh, he came and visited Chris and I up in Reading and um, ended up 
hanging out, being a friend of mine, move. I don't know. It's just like this series of like random things. And he was just like, you know, I'm thinking about this and wanting to do something on, you know, division you know, divisions and polarities and dialectics or whatever. And I was like, yeah, I'm thinking about that too. And he was just like, hey, what about doing a show? It was just very like spontaneous. And in this conversation in a um, storage unit like facility (laughs) that we have the conversation, I think. And then it just, we were just like, yeah, let's, let's talk about it. Let's do it. And it turned into a show. It was just like, oh, cool. What is your memory, Derek? Uh, all right, let's get down to brass tacks. Because I remember back in the day when we first met up in the Bay. And oh, that's it was right. really cool to realize that Chris is from the Zay. That 808, ain't that great? <laughs> Man, I can relate. <laughs> I was I Were was you practicing that, that rhyme? Not at all. It's just... <laughs> I'm inspired Amazing. by so much shit, you know. I've been in this YouTuber game, whatever the hell people want to call it, for a dozen years. And yes, I've observed a lot over the years and like cattails and <laughs> <laughs> you know, in reference, you know, we first met for the first time, all three of us, so pretty much the same day. Yeah. We were at a salsa convention in uh, South San Francisco. That was dope. I swooped up Chris. We went and did a cool little uh Ballad uh, out in Half Moon Bay. We even did a video about that. It's on Chris's channel and mine. Old dip. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I really, truly remember. Um, <clears throat> it was the the next day. We had a wonderful little brunch with the your friends, and then we just walked around the that hotel complex. It was really cool, a little Bayside walk. And I was really intrigued and surprised to hear like yeah like you guys have a really cool community up in reading in this and that and like for me i was trying to just find my grounding because i was really at a loss of you know leaving france trying to be with my ex-girlfriend in canada got denied the border yada yada and then yeah just like trying to find you know my tribe and all that stuff and yeah i was like really fortunate to to meet up with y'all and obviously learned about you guys we've been our friends on facebook for a while through mutual friends but a lot of people just don't meet up with each other in person in real fucking life yeah and uh i feel like i had just the opportunity to to do such so i did and (laughs) you were the first two pretty much that i met but yeah I remember we had conversations and like even close people in your inner circles that are looking are more freedom inclined. There's still issues going on and Mm -hmm. a lot of it seems to stem from relationship issues and stuff and not just being on the same page, not understanding certain core values or principles, if you will. Mm -hmm. So uh, all these things compounded uh, with stuff that was on my mind already and stuff and having fallen outs with certain people as well. And, like, yo, where the fuck is the unity within the goddamn fucking community? Mm-hmm. Sometimes, because you can't really spell that without the other. But <laughs> <laughs> like, We're supposed to be, like, evolved, uh, enlightened and all this stuff, yet we're still caught up on a lot of hangups uh, between ourselves and relationships or friendships or whatever, or just, like, phony f- Facebook friendships and, like, oh, we're going to block this person, you know, because, you know, they don't agree with blah, 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 X, Y, Z, whatever. It's like, <clears throat> dude, are we not fucking adults? What happened to that shit? You know? Like, <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you had been thinking about the idea. What brought the idea to your mind? Yeah, because, you know, I've been thinking. Like, <laughs> like <the> Rick. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, Leslie, I, I wanted to do some kind of video presentation as well. I, I just thought that, you know, taking a fresh approach to podcasts or making videos or having interviews and stuff um there's not a whole lot of people really you know trying to strike at the roots of these fucking uh, divide and conquer tactics really and just addressing it one by one yeah picking them out like little like inverted uh acupuncture that's on the human body of the around the planet man what the hell Does yeah that mean- yeah. Yeah. I think I think what you said about getting to the root of it is what we're trying to do. So we're not 
just talking about like the differences of opinion, you know, back and forth, that seems pretty useless. It's like, what is really that thing that can help unify, you know, on these topics? What is the bottom line, you know, of a uh, design? Yeah, because, <clears throat> yeah, those common grounds. I mean, like, you know, hanging out, visiting you, Chris, and Brandon Spencer and Mario West, you know, because we've been asking around, you know, you got that natural law? <laughs> <laughs> and that is such, you know, it's something that's supposed to be within us, these codes of consciousness. And they really just have to be explored, activated, experienced, and, and all these things. And people just don't even understand the fucking terms sometimes. And even people that are in certain communities don't really fully embody or have these things integrated within their psyche at least you know and just operating from that their behaviors their actions and, and their words they correspond they're in alignment right yeah yeah you know what really strikes me um you know i remember i did that presentation humanity's most powerful weapon and partly because you know i came from a background of spending some time doing some team um team challenge teams ropes course and team building kind of um, facilitation. And it was one of the most amazing things I did um, when I was in my travels when I was, you know, 18, 19, 20, in, the, in those ages, I think 22, 23, I was out there teaching, um, facilitating these ropes course things. And I was seeing that people could work together, you know, and I see a lot of other examples in society. And, you know, when people talk about anarchy, it's like, it scares the average individual because basically what we're saying is that we don't want um, government in the form it exists now. And I think for most people's mindset, like they, they think government is synonymous with organization and they're thinking, well, without organization, it's just going to be a world of chaos. And that's normally where that term anarchy gets all confused to mean chaos when in fact it means not having rulers. But even in the case of not having rulers, we're still going to need some kind of process of organization. There's going to be a lot of chaotic possibilities between here and there. So, you know, what does that prompt in your thought process and how does that tie into dissolving the divide? Um, I'll go ahead and ladies first. I'll send it to Leslie first. Oh, your uh, mic turned off. I'm oh. muted. Sorry. Um Yes, I think that people have fear, right, about what's going on in the world. And people, most people like know that there's a bunch of bullshit going on, but they don't have the framework to understand like the big picture of what's going on. <clears throat> and because of what's really going on is really outside of the paradigm of their cultural experience or what they've been told or programmed, so to speak, to believe is true. And um, I think from this, like a certain lack of knowledge and, a, and their own fears um, and lack of self-awareness too, end up reacting in ways or, or finding topics that, that strike a chord and then they'll like pick pick a side or make an opinion that that they think is right and best, you know. Um, but in the end, you know, it's 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 a reactive kind of a stance, you know. And then they if they end up unconsciously perpetuating more conflict and more chaos, you know, in the world. So I think that there's there's beliefs that people have, there are fears, there's comfort levels and security concerns. You know, they, people don't want to lose that. There's, and a lack of their own self, lack of knowledge about self, right? And not, not having um, good understanding of their own psyche and their, where they're coming from. And so I think all of that adds up to people um, being afraid of of the world in a way and feeling powerless or feeling like they have to grab onto something, you know, and make that the thing. 
Um, but usually all of that is about the external world, right? It's about the stuff that already exists in the politics and the causes that are being, you know, promoted uh, through the media, you know, and that's really fueling a lot of that, that fear and that misunderstanding of, of our, of where the power really lies, which ultimately it always comes back to internal power, right? External. Yeah, look, what about that locus of control? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Things like that really was like, mm-hmm. oh, wow. Yeah. Like I want to work with this woman, you know, Leslie or in mm-hmm. creative stuff, mm-hmm. like delving into your works and yeah. So yeah. On that and quite a bit. Yeah. And, and what the locus of control, it's, it's a psychological term that basically refers to where we see the power lies. You know, do we see that the things that are going on in the world are externally caused and that the solution is external and that we have to vote the right person in or we have to, you know, um, put this person in jail or, you know, whatever. It's all external focused. And the more that we're looking externally, the more we're grasping almost often in random things, you know, that aren't really solutions. And so the internal locus of control is where we recognize that we have a lot of power in ourselves, the potential to create our world, you know, and, and, and to manage our own thoughts, feelings, and actions in such a way that's harmonious and principle-based and and that there's a lot that can happen from within. Not that we can control everything, but there's that saying, you know, really understanding, um, if we understand the root of the problem, then we will know where to put our effort in the solution. You have anything you wanted to add to that, Derek? Yeah, sure. Just, and I understand people just don't, we've never really been taught or, you know, shown outside of, you know, <clears throat> independent literature, it seems, of a, a world without government or world with, you know, something described other than without a different fucking name. That doesn't mean mind control. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> at the same time, and this is why I love having, you know, all these guests that we've had we, uh, with John mm-hmm. Rowland, he, speaks about, you know, like, well, just observe the word mind control. Are we really in control of our own, first and foremost, like the first hermetic principle type of shit? So that, you know, really stems to what Leslie's talking about with the the inner control. The, locus. the lo- internal locus of control. <laughs> right. And a lot of people just were programmed to kind of delegate that out to governmental bodies and stuff. And, mm-hmm. and yeah, there's so much more societal entanglement besides just fucking mm-hmm. government. You know, there's corporate oligarchic mm-hmm. psychopathic mother efforts, mm-hmm. you know, they have more power than uh, politicians mm-hmm. in government. Have you seen uh, Google or Twitter or other mm-hmm. <coughs> entities able to censor mm-hmm. presidents like that? So I don't know. There's a lot more people we need to consider and like what kind of world do you actually see yourself living in in the future if there was no government? How are you going to contribute to that? How much more augmented responsibility does it take for each individual to build that proper hermetically sealed society, as I like to say, where we do have, you know, certain rules and regulations to go by like natural law? understanding the true cosmic balance and equality of things and yes we do have to use that double-edged sword of truth yeah (laughs) yeah and i think you know that's a powerful symbol right the sword is in the hand you know there's there's power there and and i this when you have this mindset of, okay, an internal locus of control, it's like, what can I do? And do, and I have a responsibility to do something. And I think a lot of people want to do something. People want to feel purposeful and uh, be of service in the world. And it's, it's, it's from well-intended motivation but often lost in the solution and are and so 
when we, so I think part of what we're offering is some framework for different ways to think about what you can do, right? And, you know, if we're like David Rodriguez coming on and talking about the school, the school system, and that there's really a better alternative, you know, to the, the public school system, to the mainstream school system, and to help normalize the idea of an unschooling, same Dana Martin, you know, and looking at attachment parenting and unschooling and just opening people's minds to alternative ways of, of bringing um, education to our children and, and the, how much, how empowering that is for our world, you know, to, to detach, you know, so sometimes the, power that we have is in the detachment, you know, from certain systems that are perpetuating division, right? So what is it that's dividing people? Well, you know, there's so many examples within the government system, the medical system, the school system, the political system, the, um, you know, there's so many, so many examples. And then on a more personal level, okay, we have as within, so without, we have the divide inside of ourselves. And, you know, we all talk about self-work and, you know, what comes to my mind right now is emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. And um, even like with people that we love and that we're really close to, I've found that, you know, living in the same house with anyone can be difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, We all have our like personal boundaries and such. And it's hard. It's hard to um, get along with people. Is it? Is it? Um, is that a result of our modern society? Is that a result of evil influences? Is that a result of our choices? Well, I'm sure you guys would say it's a little of each. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I'd like to get back to that. You know, personal aspect. I just wanted to touch on it because. But I think one thing that really brought us, brought you guys together with dissolving the divide, is noticing there's this what we call freedom community. It's this loose term, but we see a lot of argumentation and disagreements going on that seem kind of like outside the point. And so I was hoping you guys could talk a little bit about that. Some of the things we see on social media and the videos we watch and the way you're trying to differentiate um, the work you're doing, which is similar to my process um, to try to dissolve these ridiculous divides, even within those who call themselves freedom community or anarchists, or et cetera. Um, Yeah, like what are some of those, what are some of those um, divides and what are some ideas you've come across in your... um... So you want, so you want me to, to first, you want us to first address the the freedom community division? Yeah, that's kind of where I was thinking, the thing that really highlighted that really brought you guys together on this, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it certainly was one aspect in in seeing um, people within our own community, you know, have conflicts or misunderstandings. And and it really highlights that, you know, this, this is, this is hard work, right? Like we've all been traumatized. We've all been let down. We've, we've been, um, screwed over you know there's so many ways that all of us have are coming like like wounded soldiers you know like with our own baggage and and we're all working on ourselves, you know and there's going to be differing degrees of self-awareness and uh you know actualization right but i i think that so what happens is sometimes you know, people do get triggered. It's bound to happen, right? And and have we're this we're all passionate people, and we're all fiercely independent. You know, we don't really get into this this real conversation and and and, and as teachers of natural law without like really being independent people. And so we we run into those clashes now and then in in various ways. I think just it's inevitable in any group of people, right? And so we have an opportunity within our own community to to embody the the work of self-growth and um, 
and continue the inner work. So what I kind of say with like our podcast, it is, it seems to, in the end, always come back to doing your inner work, right? It always comes back. That is the first level is going within, doing, if you want to call it shadow work or, you know, deep introspection, getting, developing self-knowledge, healing traumas, healing wounds, learning about your triggers, um, recognizing how you are responding or reacting in conversation. What are your biases? What are your expectations? You know, there's so many aspects, right? And we have this inside ourselves as individuals, but then we ha- then we face it with each other. In, and, and the skills to communicate and solve problems and, you know, are really necessary at the very root of solving any, any conflict or division. And it, it's not just, you know, why would we think that our community is going to be different, right? We're just people. And so we, um, you know, we, and I've witnessed, you know, people come back around too and repair and, and, you know, people embracing each other again. And I think that ultimately, like in our, in, is that we, we, we unite on the vision, on the, the ultimate passion of finding the truth and, and sharing information that we think is helpful for the world. And that is ultimately, I think, um, one of the unifying things for any relationship, whether it's, you know, a couple you know, Mark Passio has recently talked about, um, you know, the genuine relationship is not just about, you know, person to person, but person to person in the context of facing the same direction, being united on principles and vision and both valuing the truth. So I think that that's true for friends. It's true for communities, any group of people that's working together for a common goal. Maybe it's to build a community, right? To to do communal farming or, or get some land. And, you know, if those are grand ideas, but if you don't have the, the inner work and the relational work done, you know, you're not working on it actively, there's going to be more and more divides and conflicts. Yeah, and what do our good friends and family, the folks at Levolution say? Love thyself to know thyself. And if you don't have that love for yourself, you ain't got that really to give to others. <clears throat> Whether you call them your sisters or brothers and all that. But uh, yo, Rick, I hear what you're saying. I see your comments. And uh, dude, I'm not like any kind of tarot expert. You know, I'm an enthusiast, if you will. I can't give you a good shuffle during this live stream to, you know, pull a card for you, but maybe I'll do one just for the sake of it. But, you know, going to your other uh, comment regarding, you know, everyone being on different levels. Yeah, that's everyone should really recognize that we're all on different levels. Our paths may differ for whatever, you know, life path reason. We're all in certain, you know, different planetary templates as far as, you know, our birth charts and all this jazz. Which, by the way, Leslie and I both got that Libra ascendant, so it makes sense that we, you know, <laughs> the scales, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mind forces with that. But uh, yeah, it all comes back to like, okay, so why do certain people have a lack of compassion, a lack of patience, or whatever regarding how they respond to other people, especially online? And just y'all are older than me; we're old school. We've been around before the fucking internet was really a thing, right? <clears throat> and what have we noticed, like, especially just like in the 90s, all of a sudden people can pop off at the top of the lip without re- repercussions and, t- and talk shit on the internet like it was, you know, the newest thing since sliced bread or some sh- I don't know, you know? <clears throat> so people are getting away with, you know, verbal slaughtering, if you will, you know, just because, you know, they can go off on any kind of ad hominem attacks and not really get, you know, beat up for it like they would in the the old days or whatever you know and that's not to say like we got to beat people up just because they say something bad but you just see a lot of more a lot more discord and a lot less humanity behind certain exchanges of words Mm -hmm. on the internet Mm -hmm. and 
you know, just realizing, you know, over the past couple of years, like, wow, AI and transhumanism is like knocking at our goddamn doors. Like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we cannot lose that humanity even more than we have already, you know, through, you know, simple conversation. Like, what the hell? Like, are you able to speak about that universal, you know, cosmic law principles of things in a Pose manner, simplistic. You can break it down to fucking virtually anyone that you come across on the streets, you know? Or are you going to be triggered because they're getting impatient because they don't understand it off the first, you know what I mean? Like, come on. No. And like, there's so much uh, psychological operations going on that have people pulled this way and that. And it's really hard. It makes it muddies up the water. Like, Chris, you know, yeah. on Great Work Warrior chats along for a while, right? Yeah. yeah good points. You know, Derek, I want to say a few things from what you're saying. One is like the social media uh, influence and the, the way that I think that media in general really promotes the conflicts. Like that's what gets views. Let's get somebody, you know, kind of losing their shit, you know, and throwing something, you know, or like calling somebody names like the reality TV version. It's like really exploits conflict because it's fun to watch, you know, and it's like, like cheap laughs at other people's expenses. And that's become very normalized and popular, which is weird to me. And I think that um, that's part of our challenge, really, is that talking about some of these topics is kind of may seem boring, you know, because we're like, you know, but um, <clears throat> it's, we're, we're up against that. I just I'll point that out. And then I think also we're up what we're up against is just the general increase in stress in the world and people's lives. And that people are very distracted by their stressors. And so, you know, when you're stretched thin and you're living in a city and you're sitting in traffic and you know, I mean you're getting frustrated with the drivers next to you. And, you know, there's just so many frustrations. And I think that people, um, you know, people are listening to podcasts. That's a good thing. So start listening to Dissolving the Divide as on your commutes and so forth. But, you know, it's, uh, we have a, a lot to regulate in ourselves, right? Just to have the bandwidth to think about these bigger issues and to, um, and to, you know, put our energy, our own energy towards solutions. Yeah. Leslie, real quick, just to state that, you know, our channel, you know, our first out the gates, like that's what we really tried to establish as our foundation of, Hey, we got to start from within first and foremost, you know, really understand mm -hmm. the internal divisions and things that are not aligned certain people are operating on whatever mm -hmm. contradictions or mm -hmm. falsehoods and yada, yada, right? Yeah. So we're yeah. up to Brandon Spencer, Mario West and Nate Cap, you know. Yeah, some really good color. good starters. We had yeah. Rodney out there doing some astrology too. Yeah. So we're getting a big broader uh, perspective, the cosmic perspective as well and how that plays out. So those are some really good ones. Rick had a, has a comment here that I wanted to um, reflect off of. Um, I notice many will adopt an ideology or latest popular movement without actually um, like knowing the roots of what they are supporting or defending. I think that's really an uh, important comment <clears throat> and that we end up, ha you know, and I look out in the world and the way people are arguing, they're arguing so passionately over something that they believe is so true and that and yet, without knowing that what they're supporting or fighting for is actually a manipulation, they're, they're actually being manipulated, in a sense, through their own passion for it. And, and that, that um, chaos magic out there of, you know, and problem reaction solution is really playing out at so many levels that people are getting tricked and don't see it you know, where there are problems created often by governments and then all this chaos, these problems happen and people are like, oh my God. So Hegelian, right? Yeah, the Hegelian dialectic and being manipulated. 
and and people are then becoming in argument argumentative with each other because of this you know it's got to be the the democrat or it's got to be the republican or it's got to be israel or it's got to be palestine or you know when it's really neither it's been a fabricated disagreement almost you know many many, many times it's been formulated for years 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 where people are so entrenched in their point of view that they can't see an, a broader perspective or see how they're being their energy is being siphoned or they're being used for a particular agenda that's not benefiting any of us or them right but and and so if if people can really look at their belief systems and just open their mind to the possibility that there's more going on and ask questions and be open to new information can make a world of difference. Yeah. Yeah. So many subjects out there just totally sidetrack the main, the main issue. Um, you know, really struck me, like you said, Derek online, because people are speaking through an avatar, it, it removes that accountability, that um, responsibility you'd have if you're face to face with somebody. And that's also true of the structures, whether it's governmental structure or corporate structure, we get so far removed from decision making that it sort of just becomes out there. It's not really my problem type of thing. Nothing I can do anyway. Mm -hmm. All I can do is just go and put my ballot in the ballot box, you know, and those of us that have firmly decided that that's not a, that's not even an honorable uh, right action are, um, you know, a lot of us have come together online, but then even within those people, we find that like, for instance, flat earth, people are going back and forth, just straight up fighting. And the people mm -hmm. that don't want to hear a bit of it are just like, nope, it's all stupid. Every bit of it's dumb. And the people that have found some things in it that are interesting and want to share are offended. And, and they, you know, that's like one of those divides that's out there. And I've always seen it the whole time. I'm like, yeah, but is that really the point here? Because, okay, we could argue about sexism. How big of a deal is sexism right now? And that's another one of those, you know, um, people want to argue about their sexuality. And then we got like the vegan, the fight between the vegans and the meat eaters, you know, and throwing volleys back and forth there. Oh, you damn meat eaters. You obviously don't know anything about natural law. Otherwise, you wouldn't be eating meat. Mm -hmm. Right. And then that's their main point. They want to drive home more than anything. And, and, you know, I wonder how much of this is actual people and how much of it is kind of instigated by the greater evil that's paying money for people to, you know, support these fights. We know the social media algorithms are keeping all these disagreements going. But all in all, it's like united we fall, united, you know, divided we fall, right? United we stand. So maybe you guys can help steer, like I'm bringing up some of these things that I know are hot button issues. Um, how do we help people not get stuck in them? How do we lead, guide, encourage um, some positive responsibility in the light direction? Mm -hmm. I'll say real quick, if you don't mind, Leslie. Hey, hey Fred. <laughs> yeah, Fred. Yeah, Sarah's here too. And hey, Sarah. Yeah, hey guys, thanks for joining us. We understand there are certain priorities. There are certain requirements to establish levels of freedom and just well-being, proper states of mind and all these things. I think people just might lose sight of that and might need some reminders of these things and not get so sidetracked into distractive dialectics that are... <clears throat> causing discord and division so yeah we can see certain common grounds through all these things and it's just good to kind of just lean on those things like cosmic law like natural law but yeah even within these communities yeah i mean like i understand you know like cause no do no harm to any sentient being or anything like right but uh are these people really in tune with animism do they understand people everyone else has a different you know blood type or biological makeup and all these things like i have friends that you know had miscarriages because they were on a vegan diet or had you know health issues and this and that it just so like if they don't fit don't fucking force it you know like why are we trying to create these 
standards that are unrealistic and it's not necessarily in order of what needs to be prioritized. Yeah. 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 I think that we are complicated. We're in a complicated state right now in our, our world, right. As individuals and as a collective, there's a lot of water under the bridge, a lot of damage done. You know, our physiology has been corrupted in some ways, you know. And so when we're talking about like natural law, we're talking about the value of each individual. Every individual has value. Every individual has equal rights. Our rights are the same, you know, and that we have a right to do, make choices for ourselves as long as we're not causing harm. So, for example, let's say on the vegan issue. When Mark Passio did, he did his communic in his podcast, he talked about the more morality of um veganism, you know, of eating meat, eating animals, killing animals. And I had been like, kind of like, I'm not sure, you know, for a long time. I'm like, you know, and and then he made sense to me from a moral standpoint, okay, from a very kind of clear delineation of morality that makes sense that animals are sentient beings. Do we, we don't have the right to take a life, right? So I understand that. And yet, what like what Derek said, where where are we now? And, and is it realistic, like, for any of these issues, you know, that we know are right or wrong, you know, like government is slavery, you know, like paying taxes is wrong. We all have a choice point as to how we're going to maneuver this dilemma and the dissonance that we're living in. So that decision is an individual, how, an in how, how we do that as an individual matter. Every individual has to face that process within themselves to do the inventory of your own life. Where are you re in relationship to, you know, corruption? Where are you in relationship to um, government? You know, do you work for the government? Do you get paid through the government? You know, things like that. Are you paying taxes? How entangled are you with this immoral structure? Are you eating meat? Are you, you know, all of these questions, there's a whole range of them. And it's our, you know, none of us are 100% out because it's pretty impossible, okay? Because we're all in a slavery system. And the more you try to get out, the more you realize where you're being held captive. And so some people might be able to do vegan like this, you know? But another person with the very best intentions may end up with some deep complications that make make it not an, a quick or easy transition. Mark, you know, like Mark Pazzo himself said, that was the last um, kind of area and the hardest one for him. You know, he did it over years, right? And and so and the same, like I would say, if somebody's pointing a finger that you're not being moral enough because you eat meat. You know, I mean, I guess it's only fair to say, well, let's see where you're being immoral too, because there's something, all right? None of us are completely out. And I think that it's not helpful to point fingers and judge and blame someone else because you have an issue that you particularly are passionate about and try to change somebody else's you know, personal decisions about how they're approaching this complicated, like, transition, right? Ooh, can I respond real quick to some of the comments? Yeah. Because, yeah, like, I'm going to tie in a couple, what's up, Libercast? Good comment. Right, guess. Don't la place, mon ami. Quoi de neuf, les gars? Qu'est-ce qu'il y a? Oh, sorry. Excuse my French, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, yeah, like, what he's saying is that we 
we can we're victims of this outputted reality and just like what are you talking about leslie in you know the build-up to where we are right now uh yeah people are on different levels with different uh, degrees of trauma and within their biological makeup emotional mental all these things uh this is a result of thousands and millions of years we have to really take things back if you are you know like people in the truth community talking about you know like we can't be fucking going halfway we have to go all the fucking way so what does that entail exactly really understanding our true origins where we come from our proper lineage our blood codex our you know <clears throat> soul templates and all these things and the origins of humanity why do we have all this you know dormant dna and like less uh, potential of our brain function and all these things because apparently our ancestors back in times of atlantis they didn't have the same biological makeup as we do they didn't have to eat you know other food sources especially like animals and shit like that to sustain their life force energy they had that shit perpetuating within their heart core center you know is they could see things properly through that first eye but uh you know we can digress on that but uh yeah so yeah goes into epigenetics and stuff and like really revitalizing that <clears throat> and uh we have to go through certain initiate initiatory processes like shadow work like really going into all the things that we've been duped about all the falses that we lived through all the bullshit ego attachments and the wrongs that we've done where is the true cosmic apology coming from people on this fucking path like straight the fuck up sometimes i don't see that within people just like reading their energy in their uh body language and all these things and, and just you know you see certain patterns of behaviors of people year in year out we we've all been kind of shooting the shit sometimes online on facebook and this and that there's a there's plenty of shit posters out there on facebook you know posting up them dank ass memes and i appreciate y'all you know this and that we can do a little bit better than that and uh just you know i see a lot of a little too much fun being poked at you know uh the victims of all these uh you know mind control tactics and divide and conquer stuff like where where's the line or where's the the hand the hand extended to be like hey man uh, you fell for some shit let me show you what's up over here mm -hmm. with that compassionate approach yes. not just like oh i know more than you or go fuck yourself or whatever the yeah fuck. promoting more guilt and shame and attacking isn't going to help people um, undefend, right? What the, the things inside them, right? You know, and we all have like unique, we're all entering this world with a totally unique template, right? Based on our ancestors, you know, lives and their DNA and our soul, you know, agreements like these complicated things that we walk into and we're all very individual and so that individuality needs to be respected and if we are a person who is you know making our best effort to detangle these complicated this complicated web that we're in i think that that's good right so and and it's a complicated web and it's sometimes hard to know where to start or how to even get out of it, right? And, and we come in with different karma and different bodies and different traumas and different mind viruses and, 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 and beliefs that it's, it's a process that takes time and diligence and focus and we're going to be at different places from each other at different times. So that compassion, I think, is really important, be, especially if we want to be a team on some level and, and unify to, um, 
work together against the things that are really threatening us as a humanity, you know, the tyranny and the, 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 the stealing of our freedom and the disrespect for our rights. I mean, we are really not being generally, um, as a humanity, being treated like we're very valuable or important, but we are. And just starting with knowing that and recognizing that is like can open the door and then reaching out to gain knowledge and figuring out, okay, what is my strategy, you know, individually, what is my strategy and where can I make some big changes, you know, on a more quick way and what are some of the slower processes and i think that recognizing that you know we're all going to die imperfect <laughs> okay none of us are going to be like perfected humans when we leave this world but if we can look back on our lives and say you know i did my damn best you know and and that we can support each other in that effort I think that's a lot better than fighting with each other over like whether the earth is round or flat or whether you eat a steak now and then, you know? Yeah. Thanks for, you know, clearing some of that up. And I'm glad we opened the door with some of the more difficult topics, because I think part of the game is just opening that door and being real about them and being like, Hey, here's what people are disagreeing about. You know, how important is that? You know, it brings to my mind, I, sh I feel like I almost need a little song for this. Um, Chris is the metaphor man, the metaphor man. I always got <laughs> little metaphors and allegories for everything. But um, like I've always imagined, you know, these movies when there's two, there's a big battle going on, right? And like the one side shoots like a volley of arrows. And it's like the whole sky is black with thousands and thousands of arrows, right? So imagine we're the, you know, we're the ones in the field. All these arrows are coming. So you got to hold your shields up, right? Yeah. Now, if we're all together and we're all holding our shields up, we have a pretty powerful shield against this attack. But if we're all separate and spread out on the field and looking in different directions, you know, we might not even. And then, you know, like when you're under attack or when you feel under attack is kind of what you're describing, being overwhelmed with all these problems. I think a lot of people are like, I don't know, mm -hmm. there's this problem, there's that problem. How do I know which one to battle? Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's like you can't even move your shield long enough to kind of look and see what's going on in the battlefield to see mm. where you should be. Because, you know, if you move your shield, you're going to be getting hit with arrows. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, there's this and I feel like there's this a really important thing we need to do is like help people focus. Like, what is the next step? Literally right now in my mm. life, what do what should I be focusing on? Because there there's arrows everywhere. You know, and nobody's standing together in a straight in a, you know, a good formation to block all these arrows. Mm -hmm. people. So we're constantly getting more and more divided and fractionalized in our thinking. And how do we build this cohesiveness? What where do we start? Like, what what is the focus? Damn, real quick with those arrows. I, I like that. Um, <clears throat> what you mentioned, Chris. Uh, to the point, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And one of the logos I was working on with our Dissolving the Divide was an arrow kind of pointing down to kind of, it was symbolic for whatever reasons, but I was like, ah, I don't want to have, you know, weapons of whatever. But, you know, these things are tools regardless. But, uh, yeah, like, are we, oh, man, you had a really good thing you said about just, like, being on target. Uh, I think there's a comment of from fred you know being like bullseye with I, need, no, I need i need you uh man. having that proper care when we pull back the bow at the same time if we are gonna strike back at the empire whatever <laughs> and uh yeah i like that moving out as a unit and like <clears throat> for me being awake since 2012 i was really in i was isolated as fuck out in france and so i was super excited to be in america whenever i came back to visit or whatever especially in more recent times, eh? <laughs> and, you know, just like having maybe over optimistic ideas of, wow, we can like, you know, create like strike forces or like, you know, little teams where we can, you know, team up and have like a group of like a, even just like two, three people who have some free time to just, I don't know, it's just like, <clears throat> bum rush some of these bullshit echo chambers full of ignorance or whatever and try to get something 
get the ball moving in a lot of different directions in a lot of different ways because we have a lot of potential to do a lot of amazing things and use our fucking magic that we should have been cultivating from the goddamn fucking get-go if you are really truly on the spiritual path or awakened and all this shit you know so yeah will keller what's up mm -hmm. happy ostara what me first a day of uh aries in the, in the place to be that's not that first gate, as Rodney would say. Yeah, Leslie would say. Yeah. Well, Will had a had a point there um, about yeah. how important it is for the truth and freedom movement to do the inter more. You know, we all need to do more internal work, right? The truth and freedom communities really need more internal work, so they're less reactive and acting on better combos like this one. And so that internal work is really important. And I, I've been thinking, you know, about. Okay, I was thinking about. I I really respect. Um, Mark Passio's, uh, his podcast, starting from the beginning, when you start to look at how he has mapped out this process of opening up the world of what, you know, what's going on in the world, he, it's very brilliant. And where I, if I'm not mistaken, I think one of the very first things he starts with is understanding our own brain and how our, we have a left and a right hemisphere and that we're biologically actually kind of, I think, set up for, for this binary kind of experience of left and right, masculine, feminine, these pol polarities. And it seems that humans have just this automatic, natural tendency to kind of think in all or nothing or this or that, red or blue, good or bad, and that that maybe we have a little bit of biological setup for that. But yet our capacity through our frontal lobes and this ability to communicate between those two hemispheres really allows us to think in such much more complex ways, right? to see that things aren't just black or white. Things aren't just good or bad, that there are nuances, there's complexities, there's this, it's, it's an exciting actually um, opportunity that we have as humans to think, right? And, and I, and I, and one of the and the, the way that we're programmed, so the other, one of the other things is, you know, we want to understand how our mind works, how our psychology works, and then to evaluate our, our worldviews and to question them and to see that a lot of our worldviews have come from programming, that we are programmable programmable beings, that our worldviews and our opinions and the way, the things that we've just assumed are just the way it is. It's just natural. It's just, what people call natural a lot of the times is really an artificial thing that's been overlaid into our existence, but we just are so used to it that it's what we know is just what we do. And so we're, t we're challenging that, right? We're challenging that comfort level and this is a really hard thing because when you start to challenge your core beliefs, it creates a somewhat of a crisis in your life, potentially. It's, it's can, can like make you wonder if you've been like barking up the wrong tree your whole life. And, and, you know, the, and when you start to see maybe that you're been involved in things that you're, you actually wish you, you weren't because they were do, they're connected to wrongdoings, you know? And, and so it, it does create a, an emotional spiritual crisis on some level. So we're like, Hey, go, let's create a, a spiritual crisis, you know, just come on, do it. You know? And we wonder why people don't want to, and they're like, no, I'm not going to look at that. So it's, this is a hard, it's a hard road, but it's so valuable. And, I think that we we maybe we need to talk more about what the benefits are of doing this hard work. You know, why why should people be be doing this? Why not just be close, put the blinders on and just do the daily grind? Well, yeah, I mean, to bring it back around on that point, you know, for me, like there were some hard realizations on my trail. Um, 
you know, it's been a while now and then there's always going to be more realizing and um, learning about myself. But, but, you know, there's some pretty big, there's some pretty, pretty big, huge um, things right out in front of us that I want to share with the audience in terms of what, what can be done um, in our day-to-day life. I mean, a lot of the things that people are bringing up, I don't know how many of you have experienced this, but I'm always trying to bring, ever since I was young, conversations back around to morality, spirituality, you know, why, why is it all, what, what's the big picture? And I get this glazed over thing where people immediately usually want to change the subject. And I began calling it sidelining recently. It's like, the most difficult thing to look at is the most hardest truth. It's like uh, trying to look right into a flame or, or trying to look right at a really bright light. It's like, you want to look away. You want to put on sunglasses. You want to kind of avoid it. I get it. I've had to go through this myself too. You know, it, it, even on a daily basis, you know, even though I've now made doing this great work, part of my practice of my daily life and something that I work on day to day, it's still very difficult um, to not like be angry at all the people that don't get it, for instance, Mm -hmm. to not have an attitude towards people that are saying things that are divisive and that are doing the opposite of what we're really trying to get at. You know, the core issue I I feel like is what are the worst Mm -hmm. types of violence being done on earth right now on this planet Mm -hmm. is like massive killing and raping Mm -hmm. of, of people has been done by government. And that's why we have to keep bringing that up is that this organized, you know, giving up, uh, submitting ourselves to this authoritarian belief system, whatever belief system, whether it's your religion or your government or your corporation, anything that you're be willing to put aside your personal decision and choice to say, no, that doesn't seem right to me and do it anyway, because it feels good in the moment or so you, even if you got to feed your kids, right? Like we have a lot of justification. That seems like a big one on, you know, feeding our kids. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, the principle holds true that we got to think about the bigger picture of what's right just because it's right. Not because how it works out good for us in the next few moments or days, or even maybe our child's life. We got to think about the big picture and take responsibility for that. So, I guess, you know, that's a mouthful, but I kind of summarizing some of the things you guys said and then bouncing it back. But what I really want to ask both of you next is um, the hard part is being compassionate. The hard part is caring about people so that they'll actually hear what we're trying to get across is the most important message. The hardest thing to hear that making our ears ring, that make us want to turn around and make us want to put on the shades and not look at the bright light. Um, What are some of the things in your life I mean, it'd be great if there's some things in the last year since doing the Dissolving the Divide that have really impressed you, but it doesn't have to be then. I'm curious, in your own personal life, what are some of the things that really actually made you open your eyes, actually made you look at the most difficult things, and maybe sharing with those with other people will help them on that path as well. Does that is that a good question? Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I don't know what's so funny about it. <laughs> the, no, I'm laughing at the comments. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Your dog would be snoring in the, oh, right, in the background. Right, yeah. yeah. I was laughing earlier also because you mentioned something about sunglasses or, you know, rose tinted glasses. And it just reminded me of, you know, the whole movie They Live and uh, how, yeah, a lot of us can take on that energy or character of that rowdy Roddy Piper who just wants to force someone to wear the glasses. Hey, just wear these glasses or I'll beat your ass up. <laughs> you you got to see this truth, man, like straight up. Otherwise, I'll fuck you up. <laughs> like, <laughs> y'all remember that movie? They Live, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> Cornerstone. Sl- you know, having a, I got to calm down my imagination sometimes. Like, straight up. <laughs> We but, just uh, want to know the joke. That's all. Yeah, yeah. But th- there's other stuff, you know, Fred, um, talking about how, yeah, like getting through your own schisms, first and foremost, is, is a bitch. Yeah. And that is quite that, you know, private journey as Sarah Cross was talking about. And uh, yeah, just what Fred was talking about earlier as well. I saw that, yes, opinions are like assholes. We can all understand that. Everyone has one. But here's the thing, and what what's funny is because I was talking about this in a different way with my my girlfriend earlier today, 
of you know we're looking at dogs and all that and uh you know i was telling her i was like you know what i'm kind of jealous because you know i don't know why they feel the need to immediately sniff the rear end of other dogs when they meet them that's like the go-to spot right but they're old factory their nose it's like a thousand times better than ours so we go, going back to the compassion and really trying to really establish a proper solid foundation of your own compassion for your fucking self first and foremost right because if you ain't got that love for yourself you can't give it to other people same goes with compassion but uh we have to understand that we are living in a fallen time matrix we're cut off from you know source to a lot of degrees we're in 3d not 4d not fucking 5d not 6d not 7 it doesn't end at 5d y'all anyways by the way i got compassion and love for y'all but holy shit y'all be trying to do some you know new age escapism on that stuff so the battleground is right here on 3d one of me may we so <clears throat> we have, we really understand when all things are considered <laughs> Do you not have compassion for you know people that are suffering you know you you walk down anyone on the street walking by you know you see someone suffering like fuck that sucks you know like that can be really oversaturated because you see that all too often you know and this is why i think the media just throws us all types of stuff that desensitizes us to so many degrees we really have to ex extract ourselves and really come back into our inner temples as you know, Sarah Cross was talking about to a good degree and all this, like, so, and one of the things that I've noticed is that, and Will Keller mentioned that is, uh, on one of his great comments down below is something about, uh, time and that people just don't have either enough time or just properly make the proper time for themselves to really have the proper introspection, meditation, contemplation, whatever situation. And yeah. What kind of environment are you trying to be placed in exactly whether it be physical or mental and your state of mind or medically sealed shit, right so yeah leslie you look like you want to say something or even hmm. i'm in thought yeah i'm thinking so <laughs> damn i lost my train of thought okay so you know i remember leslie you've always told me about your journey where you know, like you kind of had this major realization about evil. Yeah, I'm back. And I feel like that's one of the places where a yeah. lot of people that I talk to or have yeah. talked to are still kind of have that blinder on. Like they don't really want to look into the darkness. Yes. And I yeah. get it. Like we don't want to feed the darkness, but people always say that, oh, you're manifesting more bad stuff because yeah. you're talking about bad stuff. And it's like... So, uh, so I work in mental health. I'm a clinical social worker and I, I've worked in a lot of settings and I do a mental health work. And so I've been very aware of individual stories of um, horrible things that happen to people. Okay. You know, abuse and neglect and to violence and, and, and so I've not been naive in the sense of like bad things happen, but I think that, I underestimated how, uh, how, just how intentional, oh gosh, just how horrible it all, it truly is on massive scale. And I did not want to believe that there are really evil people in the world that I feel, I always like, oh, I give people the benefit of the doubt. You know, they're just, people are basically good and they're just, you know, ignorant and they're struggling with their own ego. You know, I would have all this like kind of naive rose colored glasses type of explanations, but it, it's, it was just like nagging at me. And I finally kind of what really hit home was through again, listening to Mark Passio and recognizing that the existence of mind control, understanding the programmability of, of humans and that there is an agenda, you know, there is, and people don't want to see it. They don't want to believe it, but there is evil in the world. And there it is, is being brought to our daily lives through our government you know, essentially, but it's bigger than government, you know, and when you start to recognize that there is intentional evil playing out and that there's psychopaths may, making decisions that are stealing our freedoms and hurting our children in massive levels, you know, massive scales, that wakes you up and that, and it really does ultimately for me come down to thinking about 
children because children are not really valued. If you look at where are people putting their energy and attention and what's in the news, are really children's well-being really the primary focus and priority? No. And when they are brought up, it's usually a manipulated agenda to get a bill passed or a school thing or whatever, you know. And so we do need to be like in the in the spirit of the Native Americans thinking seven generations ahead. And if, you know, that is the reason to look up off your phone screen and think really deeply think about what's going on in the world and open your eyes to all of the the ways that our um, lives are being encroached upon and that children are, are in a bad shape, okay? And, and then recently I've been looking up some statistics and, you know, the suicide rates have gone up tremendously. Um, they've increased by 36% between 2000 and, and 2021. Suicide accounted for over 48,000 deaths in 2021, which is approximately one death in every 10 minutes. And I think that's the U.S. as this were CDC. I think they're U.S. statistics. And and the the rates of mental illness, of, of depression and anxiety, it's like at least a quarter of our population is struggling with diagnosable anxiety or depression. Okay. And these these numbers are increasing. So our condition as humans is not well, we're not well. And, and so why is that? Don't we want to know? Don't we want to understand and not blame an individual for their own depression, you know, and just think it's something weird within them. There are people in a context, we are people in situations and they're we, developing the systems viewpoint, I think is a key really being able to see the interconnections, you know, and the correspondences is the thing that can open your eyes and to care, like to look at statistics and to realize how really ill our world is becoming should wake people up to do something, to be asking why, why is this and what can we do about it? What is our and every individual can do something, whether it's, you know, detaching yourself from, you know, a, a place you shop, you know, or deciding you're going to do some homeschooling for your child, you know, studying um, alternative, you know, ways to, uh, you know, use make your own products rather than poisonous ones. There's all sorts of things you can do. And then I think like you were, we were talking before, what is the priority, you know, and, um, and it may be different for different individuals where they start to tackle, but ultimately we are all heading towards um, greater and greater enslavement. And that's the future for our children. If, if we as in large numbers don't, do something different. Our children are going to are going to like the slaughterhouse. And my daughter, my oldest daughter, just sent me an app. We were talking about it right before the show about how much anxiety there is now in young children since uh, when they're on the social media platforms. That so you know that especially for girls that there's some real measurable impacts on their mental health, on their self-esteem, on their levels of anxiety. And I think kids are committing suicide at younger ages. So if we don't like think that's important and we're just going to decide like, you know, what reality TV show we're going to watch or, you know, I don't know. Well, we're in trouble. So, so let's, let's wake up here and, um, and focus on the real issue. If we don't do it, you know, who will, right? What are we waiting for? Well said, Leslie. It's beautiful. And, um, you know, as, as people that, I, I mean, I forgot who, someone in our comments had this really neat comment. Oh, here it was, decentral, decentralized mind control. He said, or she, I don't know, um, what if the battle between good and evil is so close that the exponential effect of one person's will is critical and not making the effort results in humanity destroying itself? That's a great comment. Yeah, I really like that because I think 
the key yeah. is is recognizing that every choice does matter. Yes. And that's really what's at the crux of this whole thing. Um, I've been making some cool little YouTube videos recently yeah. trying mm -hmm. to point out that um, in different ways, mm -hmm. you know, life, our experience here, this is an amazing relationship that we're having with reality, with our creator. Mm -hmm. And this whole thing that we're in, it's alive. It's a living um Thing that's trying to communicate something to us and at the core base of that the most important facet of that is what we're calling natural law or universal law or cosmic law and basically this is that there's um, a law in effect it's it's not something we created as humans it's not something we dreamed up it's something that's bound to what we are it's not man-made and and this law is is that the things we do matter and that we are given by the universe the ability to make choices. And this is a beautiful, wonderful thing that we want to grab hold of and keep close to our heart. And so every little decision is going to affect those around us, all of life, really, not just people. It's going to affect nature. It's going to affect plants and animals. So it all does matter. But the most crucial um, and relatable aspect of it is that, that we're humans. Yeah. And we have other humans around us. And that's that's the ball game that we're playing in. You know, that's the game that we're we're dealing in. And if we go out into the world and we make choices that are just submitting to the will of others, that are just going along with programs that are suspicious, then we're actually feeding into terrible outcomes. Whereas if we look at things for ourselves and do what you guys are talking about, look at all these most difficult aspects of our relationships and rethink them and rediscover them, then it allows us to work towards a world with more freedom where humans can um, relate in a better way. And it might not be in our lifetime, you know, and that's not the point. The point is that we work on principle. Yeah. So that's kind of me taking everything you guys said and trying to push yeah. it back into this ball of teaching natural law and getting out there with every decision you make and making it important. But I want to give you each an opportunity to talk about where you're going with dissolving the divide in the future and your own personal journey. Um, what can people do? Um, Derek, why don't you go up next? Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah sure so i mean just real quick because uh, i hear what jeff hammond is saying over there <clears throat> and yeah i've gone through the ringer of thought processes and just like getting uh having anger and righteous indignation beyond like, what i thought was even possible within myself of just thinking about how yeah it's like people creating the slave uh, reality that we live in based off of choices and this and that and how the fuck can we just like shake these people and wake these people and rah and did i have too much yang up in my thing with that kind of thought process i don't know but uh i realized that it just wasn't the best thing for my health and it wasn't something that i could you know i'm not gonna cavalier and you know you know, people are just gonna kind of laugh at me sometimes or whatever like you know which was kind of the case i've gone through the trial and errors of you know all different ways and approaches of trying to reach people and outside of just what i've done through my music mixes and having that as a medium of truthful expression and all that jazz but uh i just realized that i was like really hit or more missed than hit when it comes to like personal interactions or even things on online sometimes. And yeah, just, I, I don't, sometimes I don't know. We don't have all the answers. Here's the thing, you know, like, <laughs> but as far as, you know, what we see this, you know, Leslie and I, what we're doing is it's really great. I, I've learned so much from so many of our like, 40 of the guests that we've had. You know, I really love uh, showcasing some of their works in in the introduction, introduction type of thing, and just trying to highlight their specialty or what they're really passionate about. To you know, as far as like under our framework, and we have overarching. We want to have people really. I want to bring the best out of people. That's all I want to do. You know, whether it be you know. Mr. You know Joe Blow six pack who who's half awake or half dead or whatever you know like 
to the person that's, you know, on the spiritual path that knows more than I do, you know, we, we can still appeal to anyone on this earth. As far as I'm concerned, there's still so much we can learn from all types of people. So, mm -hmm. Leslie, yeah. yeah. yeah <laughs> I just wanted to say that I think that there's theoretically the possibility of changing this world in a in a massive way simply through a change in consciousness. And ultimately, that is what we're talking about is our consciousness and in the process of, of, of our, you know, changing our consciousness really is going to involve this deep self work and compassion and care. And these principles, these, the pillars of, of, of non-aggression and self-defense, right? That when you value yourself and you value the world and you care enough right, that you will act in such a way that demonstrates that care, which sometimes is going to mean saying some hard no's and speaking out and being not being afraid of conflict at the same time, right? So it's not like we're saying y'all need to like always pacify. <laughs> we're not talking about pacifying people. We're talking about standing in truth and self-knowledge and understanding right and wrong, and being able to solve conflicts through mature dialogue with an open mind, and ultimately recognize that you don't want to be part of wrongdoing. You don't want to be part of intentional harming. And I think where our pro show is going is like, it's really we'll see. And we're just really open to um, it, people coming on. Like we'd love to have some people who have a passion around a particular topic and want to um, dialogue with us about it, reach out, reach out to us. And we have some interesting, you know, a lot of, we got some interesting guests on the, on the queue waiting to, to, um, you know, for our recording so show show up derek gets them out like every week pretty much yeah and derek you're amazing with the amount of uh, work you've been putting out and the live streams and the music if people haven't taken out um awaken your mind that's his odyssey channel and i think you still got it on youtube too but i know you primarily use odyssey because youtube can be a uh, real pain in so many ways we all understand that but, you know, just like dealing with the public, it's it's not easy to get this work out. And, um, but that's not going to stop us. So we're going to take this warrior mentality and keep looking for ways to um, not be fragmented, to not be divided, to dissolve these um, separations between us and the people we're trying to reach. And really just investing time and energy purposefully into um, taking on these problems and trying to find whatever it's going to take to um start to you know recognize natural law and help other people to recognize it in, from their own point of view because we're all we are all looking at it from different perspectives and like like i said we're all getting hit with many arrows of problems so it's not easy we're not saying it is but we're encouraging you to work in whatever direction you can um, but focusing on the central principles of natural law as the guiding principles and then learning to teach and learn in that realm. And that will help, I hope, with the focus of people watching. So um, yeah. I'm done for tonight. I'm about yeah. ready to close up, but I want to leave you guys an opening to um, advertise whatever you want or um, final statements. There's a question. How can I get in touch? Somebody has a project. What's the best way? For, um, does for someone know? to get in touch with us, I think, yeah. Um, do you on want to share? Channel, there's the, you know, some uh, link trees. Uh, there's my uh, I'll see email my in that. Yeah. So depending on, you know, I have a website, alivethrive.life, and there is an option there to send me an email. Mm -hmm. So I will get an email if you go to my website and contact me there. Um, Derek and I, you know, are on Facebook, so you could always Facebook message us. Um, 
What else? Yeah, I'm going to say something real quick because, uh, yeah, I got so much I love. I did put Eric's link tree in the comments, and I'm also putting alivethrive.life in the comments. Cheers, well. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, now, I've stayed with you, Chris, um, before we moved in Leslie's recently uh, for a couple times now. Yeah, I've, I've known you guys more than anyone else really in the freedom community. <clears throat> and I was literally trying to just put my knowledge into action. I was literally trying to move up there and be more and connects with you and your community over there so we can actually get the ball rolling on the fiscal domain and really build some things. And calls to action, what I what I see is just, you know, there's the non-compliance side of it pulling ourselves out, extracting ourselves out of all the formulas of divide and conquer and all that shit. But at the same time, implementing these hermetic principles into the reality field. Are we the master builders of ourselves first and foremost to create that foundation in the physical domain type of thing, right? So, <clears throat> you know, I love what Rodney's doing with his, uh, Rodney Goodwin, by the way, he's been a frequent guest on our show. He's got a restaurant. I was trying to do something like that. It's an off grid type of thing where it could be, more of a sanctuary, if you will, for just like good quality food, uh, good vibes. And yeah, just like having like an open mic session or like having documentaries run 24 seven on, you know, in this specific rooms or something like that. Like there, there's so many different ways we can, you know, cut into angles into society and uh, slash away at the these uh, boards of Anglement that are comprised this fucking Gordian knot that we have to really just, you know, use that sword of the justice card and uh, have that <clears throat> that true guided arrow of, of truth to see and slash through these things. But yeah, as far as my works, uh, awaken your mind, awaken Y A mind one word that's been my DJ moniker for mixing you know truth infused you know soundtracks of awakening type of music mostly hip hop uh, for over a dozen years. We got the one great work warriors with Chris Jansen. I'm on dissolving the divide obviously, and uh, yeah, I've just been trying to branch out in a lot of different ways and having my mediums of expression uh, shine through what. I've been activated upon within myself and through so much knowledge that, that I've learned and tried to integrate within myself and weed out all the inconsistencies and distortions that have been plaguing humanity for far too fucking long. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Right. And we'll be back um, next week. Derek will join me with uh, One Great Work Warriors. We got an awesome topic coming up and I think we'll be displaying that next week if all goes as planned. And, um, you know, another wonderful group and it's amazing. I think you guys are a prime example of proving and showing that we can self-organize, connect with somebody else who you think will make a good show and follow through. Um, you guys work as a team. You know, Leslie's got her perspective and angle and, and ways of bringing up topics. And Derek's back there doing the technical work on the uh, editing end. And, um, you know, that's what we do on the Warriors. We all chip in. We got Brandon, you know, our master technician. And then we're all chipping in slides and ideas. And Crip Rick's always popping in with good thoughts because he's been thinking. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, please check out his show on Revolution.Radio Studio A on Mondays. 3 p.m. And that's another thing, 3 p.m. Pacific. I think that'd be 5 p.m. Central. And um, we can shout out each other's work and share each other's stuff. It's really hard to promote yourself when you're talking about natural law, freedom, and truth because you get shadow bland, shadow blocked, and blah, 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 blah. And people all lose interest because their eyes glaze over because the bright light is too shiny. But um, that ain't going to stop us from shining. So. Yeah. We, and we got Libercast in the house yeah, and willkeller.com. We got some other. Oh, yeah. Sarah. Um, Will Keller was on last night with this spirituality yeah. presentation, which is fantastic. You guys need to check it out. You can yeah. check out freedomundernaturallaw.com. Our friends at seedtruth.com. Cubbyhole. It just goes on and on. Um, and we've all 
hooked up and integrated and found mm -hmm. commonalities in the way we talk about each other. So yeah. Sarah Cross has got Sarah some Cross. stuff out there and we've got a, a collaboration. Hammond, you know, he's starting his own thing. He came on my mm -hmm. show and he popped in today with some really beautiful statements. Mm -hmm. My man, Colby working with me on different things behind the scene. Um, so it's on me folks. Keep up the good work, everybody. Encourage others, and we'll um, encourage one another and motivate ourselves to keep fighting this yeah. difficult battle of truth. Many, many hands make small work. Word, yeah. yeah. In respects to the Girls Club with Sarah Cross, that's a yeah. cool collaboration, y'all. Yeah. 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 Ladies' perspective. That's we yeah. well well need that in this world. <laughs> so thanks again so much, guys. Big virtual yeah. hug. I yeah. appreciate um, all who came and commented and and are giving this stuff some thought. Share it subscribe and um do get out there and do this work be a warrior much love from france yo i miss y'all miss yeah. you <laughs> wait till you come back derek oh, until yeah. then everybody yeah. have a great night and um we'll be back next week with end evil evil's the destruction of freedom bye everybody later on guys thanks for coming Ultimately, it's up to you.